Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and welcome back. I'm Jeannie and I wanted to do a really fun holiday mani and what is more fun than glow? I am a kid when it comes to glow. So in today's video, I'm gonna be using my dip powder as a base, which is a glow, and then some glow in the dark gel art liners, as well as some blooming gel, which is some new content that I don't believe I've used on my channel before. So if you wanna see how I create this mani, stick around and we'll get into it. For my base, I'm going to be using Moonstruck by Dipalicious Nails and I absolutely love this dip because it is a white powder that actually glows white and it is so hard to find an actual white glow. Most glows that you find are colors. It's hard to get that white glow. So that's why I love this one so much. And this was actually a whole line that maybe two years ago that Dipalicious released. So there are a line of white dip powders that glow different colors. So Moonstruck is white. I think there was a teal and maybe a green, a purple. So all different colors, but they all were a white base, but so fun, I love this one. I made sure to give my powder a really good stir because glow pigments are a bit heavier and tend to settle. So I want to make sure that I'm reincorporating that into my powder. That way I get the maximum amount of glow. And for my dip liquids for this Manny, I'm going to be using my Manny Boss liquids. This is going to be my basic dip powder application because Moonstruck is going to be a base on all five nails, so it's going to be the same process. So I'm just removing some of that excess liquid into the bottle before I apply the base to my nail. So I start with the brush below my cuticle line and I brush it downwards towards my free edge and then brush upwards towards my cuticle area and that is to prevent any flooding at my sidewalls or cuticle area. Once I've got an even coverage of the dip base, I'm going to dip into the jar of dip powder. I'm going to tap off the excess powder, and then I wanna make sure that I'm cleaning up my cuticle area and sidewalls really well. So I've got this precision tool, and I just wanna make sure that I don't have any product on my skin because leftover product on your skin can cause lifting, which you want to avoid. Even though the Manny Boss Dip Base dries about a medium dry time, so it's not too slow, I'm not going to worry about dusting off the excess powder just yet. I'm going to finish all five nails first, and then I'll dust off everything at once when I'm done. In case you're noticing the spot on my hand, I'm totally fine. Don't worry, it's not a scar, it's not blood, it's not anything like that. It's actually lip sense. So if you didn't know, I actually sell lip sense on the side, which is a smudge proof, waterproof lipstick by Senegence. They have other products, but they're best known for their lip sense. So at the time I was doing this Manny, the day before my neighborhood did a holiday market. So a bunch of vendors set up by volunteering and I figured I might as well. I don't really I'm not really active in selling anymore. It's more for personal use, friends and family, but I figured I'd see if any neighbors were interested in any of the inventory I had. So the best way to kind of demonstrate the power of LipSense was I applied a little bit to the back of my hand so they could see that it just doesn't budge. So you can rub it, you can scrub it, and it would stay on. So this is leftover from the day before. So it's starting to wear off, but it was still on there. And this was like 24 hours plus. I was being lazy. I could have just removed it with some makeup remover, but I showered, I washed my hands multiple times, and it was still on. So I think by the time I'm doing this vo voiceover, it has fully removed. I actually finally took some makeup remover and removed it, but that's what that is. So don't worry, it's not blood. But back to my Manny, I finished my first layer on all my nails. I'm dusting off the excess powder, so now I'm going to go in with layer two, which really I didn't need a second layer because this white is actually pretty opaque, but I just like a little bit more thickness. If your dip powder is too thin, it can crack on you, so I just wanted another layer, and then I will end up capping it in clear as well. So I'm just going to let you watch the rest of my process, and then we will get into some of the nail art.
I went ahead and filed and buffed off camera. So here's how it's looking. And I decided to test out my thumb before I moved forward. And I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. So I'm going to continue on with the rest of my fingers. So what I'm going to do is for the string of the lights, I'm going to use this Charm Gel Art Paint in Glittery Silver. This is from Daily Charm. And it's more of a metallic silver rather than a glittery silver, but I still thought it was pretty. So I wanted to use this instead of black. I probably should have used black for it to stand out a little bit more, but I couldn't help myself. So what I'm doing is I want kind of a random pattern. I want the string to look a little bit messy. I don't want just a straight line across my nail. So some nails I'll do like little loops, some I'll just make curvy, you know, just however I want to do it on my nail. But I want to change it up, but I do kind of want it to look like it's ending on one nail and continuing on to the next so that it's kind of like a continuous string across all my nails. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to line up perfectly just because my nails aren't straight across anyway, but I do want it kind of similar. So wherever I end on my nail, I want to start around that same area on my next nail to try to continue that pattern. And the brush I'm using, I should mention, is my Painted Desert Liner Brush. This is the 5mm brush. These are my favorite liner brushes to use because they are so thin. Because I don't want the cord to be too thick because I don't have a lot of space on my nail. So I want to make sure I have enough room to do my light bulbs, which is why I'm using this thinner liner brush. Before I cure on these lines, I want to create little notches. So that's going to represent like where the light bulbs screw into the cord. So I'm just going to apply little notches a little bit apart along. So it's going to be over and under. So I don't want them to be all on the same side of the cord. So I'm going to do this to all of the nails and then I will give them a full cure for 60 seconds.
Once I've got my gel fully cured, I'm going to go ahead and go in with my blooming gel. This one is from West Coast Dips, which is a HEMA-free formula. If you're not familiar with blooming gel, it's similar to like a gel base, but it is a little bit different. I'm not sure how, but it does act a little bit different. So I apply a medium layer of blooming gel. So you don't want it too thick, but you don't want it too thin. And then when I apply my gel color on top, it helps that color spread. And you'll sort of see that in action once I get that layer on. So I've got my layer on. I am not going to cure it. I'm using my glow in the dark gel liners from West Coast Dips as well. These are HEMA free as well. And I did just go ahead and apply them to my resin palette to make it easier. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my colors on my resin palette. I'm gonna take the dotting end tool of my rhinestone picker from iGel Beauty. I'm going to get some of that polish onto my dotting tool and I'm going to apply a dot of that color onto where I've got those little notches. And you'll see as soon as the color hits, it sort of starts blooming, starts dissipating and kind of has that really cool effect. So that's gonna give me like the glow effect of these lights. I am wiping off my dotting tool in between colors on some paper towel off to the side so you don't see that on camera, but I don't want to mix the colors together. So I'm making sure I'm wiping off the tool in between each color. So I'm just placing my dots and you'll notice as they're being placed, they start to spread. And so you want to make sure that you don't have it spread too much. And obviously how much you want it to spread is totally personal preference. But once you have it the way you want it, you want to make sure to cure it to stop the spreading. So I am working a little bit quicker just so that the first colors I'm using don't spread too much. So once I'm happy with the spread of it, I'm going to go ahead and cure it for a full 60 seconds. If I'm doing something on top of the gel layer that I just applied, that's when I do a full cure. But if that's the only layer of gel, then I just give it a flash cure until I'm completely done. So because I'm going on top of this blooming gel that I just did, I'm going to take some of that white gel liner and I'm using the same five millimeter brush from Painted Desert. And I'm going to draw like a bulb. So I'm starting with like a dot at that base where I created that little notch on top of where I have that burst splotch, whatever you call it, of that little bit of color. And then I'm going to taper it up into like a little point to make that kind of bulb shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's really small and it's not easy to do if you're not great at art. So I'm just starting with that dot and just tapering it up. So I'm just doing that to all the spots where I have that little bit of color to make it look like I've got that light bulb. Now what I did learn after I finished this finger is that the white base probably wasn't necessary. So I thought that I could make the color pop more against the bloomed color if I had a layer of white beneath it, but it didn't really seem to make a difference. So for the rest of my nails, I just skipped this step because it was kind of unnecessary. So I gave that a full cure for 60 seconds because I am going on top of it. And then what I'm going to do is for the same color, I'm going to apply that on top of the white, hoping that it would kind of stand out more against the bloomed color, which it didn't really make a difference. But I'm going to apply that color on top of the white, another full cure for 60 seconds, and then I will give it an outline with some black liner. So I will say with this process that I'm doing, there was a lot of in and out of the lamp with my hands. So I definitely wish I would have worn my UV gloves. So I ha do have some UV gloves to help protect my hands from so much exposure in the lamp, but I completely forgot to use it. I would recommend that if you have one, you use it or you put on some sunscreen just to protect your skin a little bit, but obviously you do you. It's totally what you wanna do.
just popping in to mention that after I created that black outline of the bulb, that's actually the last step of my nail. So I just gave it a flash cure so that gel doesn't move on me, or if I bump it, it doesn't mess up the design. But I just cured it for 10 to 15 seconds before I move on to my next nail. So by the time I finish all my nails, then I'll give it a full cure for 60 seconds. And actually it's gonna fully cure anyway as I cure these other layers of my other nails. So really, I only need that flash cure. I went ahead and finished my nails off camera because I know it can be a little bit repetitive. So I'm going to finish it off with my gel top coat. So this is from West Coast Dips. I'm going to apply an even layer to all my nails, give them a full cure for 60 seconds, and then I'm going to let it cool down. Once my nails have cooled down, I'm going to rehydrate my cuticles because they are looking especially crusty. So I'm going ahead and slathering it on. So this is my Scales of Mermaid cuticle oil. This is in the scent I'll be known for Christmas. And so I I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I rub that in really well and then we will be all done. I had so much fun creating this Manny and I love the glow so much. So not only does my base glow, my light bulbs glow because I used my glow in the dark gel liners. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up. It lets me know to continue creating content like this. And it also helps YouTube recommend me to others, which helps grow my channel. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. I upload content every Monday and Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. As always, I appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.